Hello. Uh, we're going to do something that people have been asking about is uh, how to take that 2D Paper Mario like animation and also have a 360 degree free rotation camera, but we're going to have the sprites always face on with the camera. And we're going to do it so that it scales with a bunch of um, a bunch of characters, a bunch of sprites in the world, and it's going to work for network replication. So, let's get to it. For people who have already seen the um, the sprite stuff, uh, I'm going to skip. I skipped ahead a little bit because I don't want to have to redo all of that. You can check it out. Um, this is Unreal Engine 5 Early Access 2. I've already imported my sprite sheet, and I've extracted all of my sprites for the different directions, and I've created my idle and my walking flipbooks. I'm going to do a quick summary of how to set up the paper character. I've created a base class that inherits off of paper character. I have two functions, animate and set current animation direction. I also have data. You can pause this so that you can get this or you can watch the different videos that helps kind of set this up. I have a down, up, right, left, down, right, down, left, up, right, up, left for my different directions that are possible and for each of those I also have now I've created a struct of flipbooks so that each direction has its idle versions as well as its walk downs which are object pointers these are new for Unreal Engine 5 of paper flipbook types. You're going to need to have um, a variable of both the animation direction as well as the flipbooks in your character as well as a boolean that says whether or not it's moving. Now in the implementation on character movement updated is the key broadcast that we're trying to look for this delegate we're adding dynamic our animate function we want to replicate set your capsule radius to 70 set your relative scale to 11 and all the axes in order to scale upwards to about your two point whatever meter human you're setting the use absolute rotation this is going to be crucial for the sprite facing on the camera at all times you're going to set your flipbook by default just an idle down cast shadow that's up to you in begin play, set your replicate movement to true. For animate, we're calling first our set current animation direction function and passing in the velocity so that when every time we move, animate's called and we first call that. Hello everybody, this is me from the future interjecting because after I made the video, I realized um, how to fix things and make it better. So I am stitching me into the video in the past. So. Some things we're going to change. Take off the U function off of set current animation direction. And you're going to add a T optional of F minimal view info, view info as another parameter here. And you're going to see why. The current animation direction, you're pretty much going to steal from the player characters. So just go ahead and copy all of this and move it over and replace what you may have had here. If you rotate around a character, um, an NPC in the world, if you will, the animation that they are using, their forward and right vectors based on their person is not the same forward and vector, right vectors of the camera. So we have to get the forward and the right vectors from the camera. So how do we do that? In the animate function, make a T optional of F minimal view info called view info. T optional can be set or not set. That's important. We're gonna do some safeties here because this is important because you don't wanna get null pointer errors. You're gonna check, is this a player controlled actor? And uh, if it's not, we're gonna get the world check to make sure we got the world. Then we're going to get the first player controller. This is going to return the local player controller. Once we have that, we're going to get the character off of it. And there's a function called calc camera. Calc camera is how we're going to get the information of the camera's location, uh, specifically its rotation. And we need to pass in the delta time, which we have luckily in our animate. And we also need to pass view info dot in place. So we're sending in the T optional to get, uh, uh, this is the out 
uh, out parameter here in this. So we're filling in the view info. Then we're going to call set current animation direction. In here, we're going to check if view info is set. And if it isn't, we're just going to return. We're going to get a forward off of it, get the forward vector using UKismet math library. And we're going to pass in the rotation of the camera, of the player's camera. Next, we're going to get the right vector using UKismet math library and pass in the rotation of the camera again. And that is how we're going to get our forward and our right. Next, we're checking if we're, if we're moving. We go into this switch and we switch our flipbook based on the direction that we've set. Same thing for idle if we're not moving. That's for a basic character. Now I wanted to have the player character to be an inherited, so I've created an inherited player character off of that base character. This is where I've set up my player input component, and I'm overriding the current animation direction so that we have a little bit more fine control. And then our movement and our mouse functions for move forward, move right, look up, turn. You're also going to need two components, a spring arm for your camera, as well as a camera. Implementation, we have a pretty hefty constructor. Get character movement, use controller, desired rotation needs to be true. Orient rotation to movement is false. Use controller rotation yaw, false. This is also going to be about how we keep our sprite on a face-on rendering to the camera. For the spring arm, these are just uh, some settings that I have played with to know these are what I want. These are important right here. You only want to inherit pitch and yaw, get rid of roll. Lag is based on just preference to make it smooth out. For the camera, again, these are fun tilt shift effects so that you get some tilt shift uh, blurring. That's how you do that. For your implementation, we're not doing anything in begin play, but I just have it there. Set up player input component. We're binding these axes. I threw in a jump for your basic character jump just for fun. Set these in your project settings like any input so that we're grabbing these from there. Set current animation direction. What we're doing here to override is we're grabbing the actor's forward vector and the actor's right vector, getting the safe normal off of both of those, storing them, and then we're going to dot product the velocity with those vectors in order to, uh, to get the forward speed and the right speed. So these are our, our speeds. We're flooring it. We're multiplying by 100, dividing by 100, so that we get some nice, usable um, floats. I print it out for, uh, as a log, as a debug, so we can look at that. We're setting our Boolean, similar like in our base character. Basically, this is very similar, but it's been tweaked a little bit with smaller zones for the right and the left movement. Go ahead and pause, look through that, understand what I'm doing. These are your basic move and mouse uh, inputs, nothing really fancy here. We're moving based on our camera's forward vector and our right vector. We're adding movement from that direction and passing the value in that comes in. With look, look up is just add controller pitch input, and turn is add controller yaw input. Compile, hit play, and if you have your project set up, you should look like this because a sprite, the way that it's rotated right now, it's wrong, right? But So what, what are we seeing here? Because this arrow, as you can see, X, this is the forward axis, so based on velocity, this is how we're looking at our sprite right now, right? So what we could do, you know, if this were like that, then, hey, that looks great, right? That's good. But the way that it's working is that the sprite is rotating with our capsule. And that's not really what we want, because if we had... Let's say, make some more blueprints off of our crawl base character. Alright, now that we have a couple of... We've got these guys. They're not that they're not gonna f rotate like that. So that's also this is kind of funny. They are not double-sided. So that's also the problem of why we need these to be rotating to face the camera. Now, 
If we did something on the tick and call it on the function, that's not going to be very performative, that's not going to scale re very well. So what we're going to do is actually use rendering to solve this. So what we need to do is find this mask unlit material, browse to it. We want our default sprite material. I'm going to duplicate, call this uh, the one for now. And I want to move that to our material folder. And we're going to call this M underscore masked sprite material base camera. And we're going to open that up. So what we need to do is use this world position offset. And the way that works is kind of cool. So we want to grab camera position. Nope. Camera position. WS. And we want to grab object position. WS. We need a multiply by a vector, and this is just going to be a constant vector. Set it to 1, 1, 0. And then we need a subtract. So we need to take the object position and subtract from it the camera position multiplied by a vector of 1, 1, 0. We now need to normalize. You hold in, it pops up and normalize. And now we need to break out float to components, or you could mask. And we need an arc tangent 2. And I'm going to go with fast, because it's fast, right? So this is the approximate inverse tangent of x over y, where input signs are used to determine quadrant. I'm not good at math. I don't know what that means. All I know is the g needs to go in the y, and the r needs to go in the x. You can look up what that's actually doing and all this math. I copied this off of um, Unreal's um, old and deprecated guide on stylized materials. So divide by... 3.142, basically we're dividing by pi, because this spits out um, this arc tangent too fast. This is spitting out in radians. So essentially what we're doing, I think, is finding the radians of between object position and camera position. So we're taking the radians, we're dividing it by pi, and now we're going to divide again by two. So I think we just got degrees, and we're dividing by two, and now we need to have 0.25 quarter here. We're adding 0.25 to the result. We need a rotate about axis node. This is the rotation angle. Now we want to get object orientation. Put that into the normalized rotation axis. The pivot point is going to be two texture coordinates. And we're going to append the first one. We need a mask, component mask, and this is set to just the R. So we're getting the first value out of the texture coordinate there. And appending it here. We want to transform position, local space to absolute world space, and pass that into the pivot point. Position is absolute is our world position, absolute world position. Just search for world position. You won't find it if you search for absolute. And that's that. Take that, spit it into world position offset. Save. That is all you have to do. Give this a little comment. Call this. Always face on to camera. Color it if you want to color it. Let's make that a material instance so that it performs quicker when we put it on a bunch of things. Go back to your art folder, get all of these flipbooks, right click. Asset Actions, Bulk Edit by a Property Matrix, Default Material, 
masked face. There it is. Set it to our material instance. Save. Close. Oh, this is where that happens. See, now we need to put that back to zero. And look at that. That sprite is always facing the camera. And it's true out here too. And if we hit play, one sec, let me fix the crawl, the character here. So something real fast that I noticed um, in our base character, absolute rotation was set in the transform for the sprite. However, in our player character, it had switched back to relative. So make sure this is important. The rotation is set to world on the sprites transform so that the sprite does not rotate when the capsule and the camera are rotating. So there you go. So there we have it. The shadows are kind of funky. I haven't figured out the funkiness of the shadows because as the rotating, it seems, I'm, I'm wondering if that is with the new Lumen system with Unreal Engine 5. Maybe if you do this with 4.27 or 4.26, uh, that will not happen because it is essentially rotating the material in the rendering engine. So, uh, from my understanding, what that's going to be is that this is now on the rendering thread. So, we can have... And all of these characters are going to rotate to face the camera, no matter which way we go. I just want to prove that this is also network ready, as you can see here. This guy is over there, this guy's here, and we are replicating properly. There is... <laughs> so, there's a problem here, as you can see. The sprites are not double-sided. So, as it's running towards, and you guys are you're looking in the wrong direction, um, that's gonna have to be solved for network stuff. And for fun, I went ahead and gave them all some basic AI and threw a nav mesh down just to show that this works with moving AI pawns as well. So there you go. That is how to do free rotation camera with the sprites always face on with relatively good performance. Running away running backwards yeah see he's got a he's got a back face so I will try and solve how to how that might be um, circumventable but otherwise hope you learned something fun today later